The second beautiful meaning is the feeling of love. Just as we need safety, we are also very hungry for love. Love has become a rare currency. And when you love people, you find that their love for you is weak. Even the love of mothers, fathers, friends, husbands, wives, children becomes weak due to material life and interest. Nobody is full of love. The married person is not filled with enough love. And the person who has his father and mother is not filled with enough love. And the one who has good friends is not filled with enough love. Why? Because human love is deficient. The love of human beings, no matter how great, is limited. Even if you have someone who loves you dearly, time may change him or he may depart. May God give long life to all. Then what? There would always be a feeling that this love will not last. But we have a father who does not die and does not change because God is love. Period. The period, period at the end of this verse, God is love, is the most beautiful thing in the verse because this means that tomorrow he will not become something else. And it doesn't say God is love if you are good or this or that. We would be lost if it said that. But instead it says God is love. And it ends with a period. Thank God the verse stopped there. It means that he is like that all the time. How reassuring. It is a reassuring thing when you pray and you feel that God loves you and is still with you. I remember a good girl who, during confession, had a problem. She was always dissatisfied with herself, even though she was a good person and always held herself accountable when she did something or did, did not do something that she should have done or did not pray well, even though she is also a diligent person. I used to tell her that her problem was that instead of being satisfied with God, she was focusing on herself a lot. She needed God. In addition, she was like the lost son, telling God that she is very bad and that she was sitting with pigs and she smells bad and she is shy. Our Lord does not look at you that way. He does not care about that talk at all. He only cares about one thing, which is that his son returned to him. And when the son returns to him, he does not care about all those things. The only thing God is thinking is, my son was dead and is alive again. My son returned to pray. My son came to sit with me. He will not think about what his son did and that he was negligent. God will not do that. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who, shall, who could stand? The feeling of love is the most beautiful feeling in the world because it is love that does not change and does not hold you accountable. This means that the love of God does not hold you accountable for mistakes. On the contrary, God is the one who pays the price. Our Lord said, I did not come to judge the world. I did not come to hold every person accountable for his errors. I have come to say, I love you. Understand that. Take it. Fill yourself up with it and believe it. When our Lord met the Samaritan woman, he said a simple philosophical thing that will remain till the end of the ages as the simplest and deepest philosophy for understanding Christianity. He said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever seeks after the body will thirst again. Whoever seeks after money will thirst again. Whoever waits for people to satisfy him will thirst again. Whoever seeks after status will thirst again. Whoever waits for people's love and money will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The person who says to himself that he will only drink from that water and that he will not be satisfied except with it doesn't care about the rest. If everything else comes, it comes. Okay. If it doesn't come, it doesn't come. Okay. Come or not, it doesn't matter. The person who says that to himself is the one who understands. By the way, despite the Samaritan woman's gullibility and religious ignorance, she understood it. Evidence of this is that she left the jar which she used for, uh, for drinking water, though this time she didn't drink water. 
she drank love and became a saint because she understood that when she waits for men to love her and when she waits for marriage, she does not find satisfaction. Then she found what fulfills one's need for love. Prayer is the source of being fulfilled. Our need for love is unfulfilled. So are you going to continue to beg to receive that love from people? From your children or your sisters or your friends while you do not need that love? Why beg when your father is waiting for you in your room before you wake up and until after you sleep to satisfy you with love? Yet you do not want to enter your room to drink. Then you say, nobody loves me. What will God feel when he hears that? Many people say, nobody loves me. If not through speech, they say it through their feelings. Nobody loves me? That is a difficult feeling for God. God will say, have I been canceled out or what? He does not keep me in his mind at all. Nobody loves you? Are you completely blind? Do you not realize? Isaiah says, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Isaiah 49, 15. He was talking to Jerusalem. He says that the mother is bonded to her child during nursing and she lives for him at that time. So it is difficult to forget her son. He said even if that happens, it's possible. However, he can never forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Meaning, God cannot take you off because you are a part of him. You are like the lines on his hand. How can he forget you? God does not know how to forget us. Your walls are continually before me. This means that he always surrounds you. Isaiah also says, Now, O Lord, you are our Father. What is the story of this word now? It does not mean the present time, but rather the moment when you discover God's fatherhood. I will tell you something personal that happened to me. The first time I heard the hymn, O oh Father, I Don't Realize, I was deeply affected and continued to talk about it in 10 conferences because I liked it so much. It is originally English and has stories, and the one who said it had a story which is that he sinned against his father, so he fled, was gone for years, and he thought that his father was angry with him or that he forgot him or that he may have passed away. He sent him a letter saying he will pass by the house, which had a garden and trees, and there is a train next to it. And if he sees a sheet on the tree, he will know that his father was still alive and willing to meet him. Then he rode the train on the day he said in the letter, and when he arrived at the station, he found all the trees of the place covered in sheets. This thing has a deep meaning, in that he is not an ordinary father, nor can he forget. So the words, now, O Lord, in the verse, mean, I can come to you, even if it may take me 70 years, to say to you that this is the first time I understand what you are a father really means. We may say, our Father who art in heaven, throughout our whole childhood, then come later and say, our Father, only to find this time it is different. The prayer is different and the feeling is different. It's the first time we feel safe. From the time God created Adam and gave us language, our teacher Luke the Apostle said Adam is the Son of God and was created to enjoy the fatherhood of God. But Adam did not understand it and he lost it. We too do not understand and continue to lose it. In the verse, Now, O Lord, you are our Father. The word now comes when the person discovers that God is his Father.